As you guys can probably tell from the amount of videos that we publish on this channel, I love video games. I love to review them. I love to go in depth on the, as many titles as I possibly can, but alas, I am but one mere mortal, and I don't have time to review everything that I would like. I do play a lot of things, though, and I thought that it would be fun to create a segment today that looks at 10 different Nintendo Switch games that I've been playing recently, and I'll review them, but they will be a little bit more quick-fire reviews. So I will give you the caveat and preface this by saying that I haven't completed every one of these games. I haven't played every one of them for dozens and dozens of hours. I've played them for hours, and I have gotten some good experience from them, and I'm able to talk about them and score them based on my experience with them. I'm gonna call this segment Quick Fire Reviews, and today it's all about Nintendo Switch games. Now the first game that I'm going to talk about is Space Pioneer. It's developed by Vivid Games out of Poland and it's published by Cubic Games. This is also a title that you can pick up for the mobile devices out there and that usually sends up some warning flags. But what we're seeing in games these days is that they are portable. They're portable but they're portable as well, <laughs> just to confuse you. So we are moving games from system to system. Developers need to do that if they want to kind of reach markets that they wouldn't be able to if they just made games specifically for one platform. This is a good fit on Nintendo Switch. Space Pioneer is a pretty cool top-down twin-stick shooter, so that's got my attention. I'm a huge fan of games like Robotron 2084 and Smash TV. They're two of my favorite games of all time. This is not that caliber, but it's got some pretty clever ideas. You're able to drop turrets behind you. You've got a little robot sentry that will race around with you. And what you're doing is you're, like the name implies, going from planet to planet and you're trying to complete objectives on each mission, which basically results in you blasting away at all of the animal aliens that exist on each planet until you reach a boss eventually. But you've also got objectives like staying inside of a circle and setting off a bomb or lighting up the energy it's going to take for some windmills to start moving or, you know, just taking over a territory or something or finding the keys and then you've got to take on hordes and hordes of little bad guys and then you get bigger bad guys and then eventually you get a boss and you rinse and repeat that. The graphics are very muted, very minimalist. They're not very textured. So the game has got a kind of a repetitive vibe about it, not just in the play style, but also in its visual kind of look. Doesn't mean it's not a fun game to play though. I thought it was pretty addictive and pretty hooky. And it also, I think, had some really nice elements that could be embellished. And I don't know if the developer is planning to add to this game or to make a sequel and to build up on it, but there's definitely some core fun stuff in this game for sure. <laughs> I'm going to give Space Pioneer on Nintendo Switch, but you can also play this on other platforms, a 6.5 out of 10. Now this next game totally blew me away. It's called Jamestown Plus, and it's developed by Final Form Games out of Philadelphia. Publisher is Battery Staple, and it's such a clever idea. It's actually almost 10 years old, this game. I never played it though. I somehow missed it. I think it was a big hit on Steam. It was an indie darling. It's a shoot 'em up, but the concept here is very clever. You're part of the British Redcoat Army, the 17th century colonist army that's colonizing Mars, and you're fighting against Martians, and you've got all of these different creatures and ships and all kinds of stuff coming at you. And you've got this steampunk technology that's fused with the 17th century aesthetics as well as a lot of, you know, H.G. Wells style science fiction. And you've got to battle all these different creatures and hordes of bad guys and it's bullet hell like you've never seen before. Well, you've seen it before because you played a video game or two. You can have up to four people on screen at the same time battling together, which is really cool. And you're battling over Mars and you'll see all of these colonists running around in the background. The background art is amazing. It's all beautiful pixel art too. Just a gorgeous game. Lots of great details on all of the ships and you can customize them with a whole bunch of different loadouts with lots of different effects and beam weapons and you can shoot this giant sort of energy cannonball. There's extra levels that are added to this game. There's different ways to play this as well. You can play it through a story, which I thought was actually really inventive and cool. I just love that there was so much attention paid to kind of embellishing, you know, the mythology of this game. I thought that was so cool. And it was such a huge surprise for me. I, I didn't know what to expect. And it certainly, you know, had a story that I haven't really encountered before. And I just thought, man, this is just so clever in a million different ways. Plus it's beautiful and the music is gorgeous and it's really fun to play with other people. 
Jamestown Plus, I think, is a must-buy for Nintendo Switch. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Next up is a game called Earth Atlantis. It's developed by a company called Pixel Perfects and published by a company called Head Up Games. And this is a, a shoot 'em up type game, and we've played many before, many games like this before, but it's fused with a monster hunting mechanic as well. So it's kind of a cool concept, and it's especially made so by the fact that the artistry in the game is evocative of, like, of old science books or ancient maps or something like that. Everything is black and white or sepia toned. Definitely antique looking, which is great. The world has sunk below the ocean and you're underwater, so it's a shoot 'em up underwater, which is kind of cool too. And you're cruising around in your submarine, which you've got different choices of subs, but you can also collect a whole bunch of power ups and sub weapons that give you a lot more power to go up against some of the big beasties that you're going to eventually have to fight. <laughs> You've got to go and navigate through these little caves and corridors and you don't quite know where everything is. It's very maze-like, kind of Metroidvania-like. So you've got to do a little bit of backtracking. You don't really get a very helpful map. What you get is a, a rectangle with a bunch of dots on it and you can kind of tell where some of the loot is but also where your big boss battle is going to eventually be but you don't quite know how you're going to get there. So you have to kind of find your way through the, the maze of different enemies and obstructions and you'll get to the big boss battles and they're fun. I think this is a pretty fun game. It's definitely addictive. It's also a little bit frustrating. It also feels like another game where it's an amazing idea that could be further developed and further kind of embellished to be something really extraordinary. Still, I think that this is definitely worth checking out. <laughs> I happen to love shoot 'em ups like this. I like the underwater setting. I like the art aesthetic. I thought it was pretty cool. I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. Now we've got Mother Russia Bleeds. This is published by Devolver and it's developed by a company out of France called Le Cartel Studio. And this is a beat em up. It's a scrolling brawler. We play tons of these games. I've been playing a lot of them recently because of all the 16-bit superhero stuff that I've been playing. But it's very mature and it's very grisly. Everybody's swearing and there's nudity in this game and there is so much blood. So you are just hacking and slashing and punching and running into bloody zombies and bloody gross pigs and mutants and police officers decked out in all kinds of armor with batons and it's just it's heavy it's a it intentionally made so but it's also got like a pixely 16-bit kind of aesthetic with lots of great little details i dig that the company was trying to kind of reach for something i also feel like it's in the wheelhouse of what we can kind of expect out of devolver especially out of their hits like hotline miami and it's well made it's also multiplayer up to four players so it can be something that you could appreciate and enjoy with your adult friends that want to get into some some gnarly grizzly stuff it's just not better than the hordes of awesome, you know, 16-bit style beat-em-ups that we've played, the fighting games, the scrolling brawlers that we've seen over the years. And that's unfortunate, you know, because there was an opportunity to escalate here, not just to deliver something with kind of an edgy, avant-garde, mature story, but also gameplay that really transcended and pushing this genre forward. But still, there's a lot to appreciate in Mother Russia Bleeds. It's definitely its own animal. <laughs> I'm going to give Mother Russia Bleeds a 7 out of 10. Next up is Super Blood Hockey, which is developed by Lauren Lemke out of Finland, and it's published by Digirati, and this is a game uh, you can play on Switch, but it's across a lot of different platforms out there, and it's a throwback to kind of 8-bit and a little 16-bit hockey that we've seen before. It's very fast, it's very accessible and very easy to play. You can also play this one with up to four players, which is great. <laughs> The sort of edgy conceit here is that, it, like the title implies, it's very bloody. There's pixelated blood all over the ice. You can leave people after a fight just sort of twitching on the ice and blood is gushing out everywhere. It's a little gross if it weren't pixelated and kind of cutesy. This is not a kid's thing. That's the thing, right? Like it looks like a cutesy kid's type of experience. So Ruby, you can't play this one. You have seen it, yes, I'm, I've been bad. But yeah, this is not something that is made for kids because you're doing a lot of beat em up in this game. 
There's also a lot of crazy modes in here. There's a challenge mode where all kinds of characters are on the ice at the same time. There's a franchise mode where you'll actually go into the locker rooms and you'll see pixelated versions of everybody showering and, and doing contracts and stuff like that, which is just crazy. There's tournaments that you can set up. Of course, you can just jump in and play some exhibition with some buds. There is something to be said about the purity of that core sort of accessible arcadey hockey experience. People still love to gravitate towards games like that and it's a game that you don't have to explain. You slide up the ice, you get, try to get as you know the one-timers when, when you can but it's just pass pass shoot and then you got to watch out for all the punches that are in this game as well and all the gore and it leaves a horrific mess for the Zambonis to clean up in between periods. <laughs> I dug this game. I think it's a good fit on the Switch. I'm going to give Super Blood Hockey a 7.5 out of 10. Now we're going to move on to Monkey Barrels. This is a Switch exclusive published and developed by Good Feel. And you know Good Feel because they've made amazing games like Kirby's Epic Yarn and Yoshi's Crafted World. They've worked with Nintendo for years and years, and this is their very first time they are publishing their own title. Now, I picked this up when Blake and I were on our trip through Japan in 2019. Man, that feels like a long time ago. So much has changed. Yeah, I was having a lot of fun with this game on my Switch Lite when I was playing it. And for some reason, I just didn't get into it enough that I could review it for you guys. But I do go back to it every once in a while, and I wanted to tell you what the game kind of feels like and plays like. First of all, there's multiplayer in this game, but it's online. And I don't think a lot of people have picked this thing up. And well, I didn't find anybody when I, I tried to find people to play with online. But there is a massive single player experience in here. It's a twin stick overhead shooter, which has my attention. It's got a crazy story of monkeys in with armor on them, and they're fighting electronic gadgets with weapons that they make out of garbage. And you're sort of traversing through different areas of Japan. So there's like subways and, and all kinds of, you know, city streets and areas that you'll probably be somewhere familiar with but you're fighting like giant like monitors and things like that and little tiny blinking little gadgets that will come at you and explode there's stuff happening in all corners of the screen and it can get a little overwhelming this is another bullet hell type of experience and it does feel ridiculously challenging but once you start to get the hang of the loadout that you have because you can have two weapons a main weapon and a sub weapon as well as different devices like turrets and grenades and things like that that can help you along your way there's a lot of mechanics involved with all of those you'll deplete energy and you'll have to reload on the fly and the pace is fast but it's also incredibly fun and rewarding once you start to kind of knock down those objectives and take back some of the checkpoints and, and defeat the enemies with some pretty cool moves I like this game a lot I think it's a very good fit for the Nintendo switch I just wish that it didn't sort of just come out and disappear, you know? I feel like I'm one of the few people that has played this game and has been talking about it. But if you like twin stick shooters as much as me, I think you should check this one out. I'm gonna give Monkey Barrels an eight out of 10. All right, we have another twin stick shooter in the mix here, and I think you guys can probably tell that I happen to love twin stick shooter games. I've been looking for a big chunk of my life to find something that can replace my love for games like Robotron and Smash TV, but nothing really has, even though Galaxy Champions TV is coming pretty close to Smash TV. It's developed and published by a company called Aquadian, and they're out of Brazil, and they make no bones about it. This is an homage to Smash TV, it's about a television show that the galaxy watches. It's the most violent TV show ever. And you get dropped into these arenas and you gotta take out hordes and hordes of bad guys. Little itty bitty ones, medium sized ones, and then bigger ones. You get a whole bunch of great weapons, flamethrowers and shotguns and you know heavy duty machine guns and lasers. And you can power them up by popping into the little robot store and spending the currency that you pick up, which is all these little blue energy orbs. And you can outfit a better dash move for yourself. You can give yourself a little bit more health. The challenge is high. I mean, you go from room to room and it gets appreciably more difficult as you go, but it's also incredibly well-tuned. There's no pressing of buttons other than the dash move that you're gonna wanna pull off every once in a while. It's really just using the right analog thumbstick to shoot in the direction that you wanna go, and you use the left analog to move, so it feels very much like Smash TV, although, What's missing is that sense of humor, the announcers, the sort of extra kind of layer of parody and sarcasm, because Smash TV was definitely a video game homage to a you know, sci-fi like The Running Man. 
And it was so clever back in its time. And honestly, it's a better game. So the, the original Smash TV is a better game than this. But there is something really addictive and compelling. It's also, uh, you can play this with another person, which is a fun co-op experience. And the visuals are pretty cool. One of the things that I really like is how the screen shakes when the chaos really erupts in this game. <laughs> I found myself very addicted to this game and I found it very difficult to put the controller down and move on to the other games that I had to review for this feature. So I think that's in the positive category for Galaxy Champions TV. I'm gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10. Hey, guess what? We've got another twin stick shooter game, but this one is a little bit different. It's called Exit the Gungeon. It's just come to the Switch, but what's interesting about this game, which was developed by Dodge Roll out of Philadelphia, and it's another game published by Devolver, is that it was one of the games available on Apple Arcade. So if you have an Apple Arcade subscription, you can play this on any of your Apple iOS or Apple TV devices or your Mac computers which is pretty cool. So if you already have that, you probably don't want to spend the money to get the Switch version because it's the same game. But the Switch feels tight as well. This is a really cool experience. It's kind of a pseudo... Well, it's an extension of Enter the Gungeon, which was phenomenal, which was a, you know, a straightforward top-down twin-stick shooter, which also had roguelike elements. This has roguelike elements, which means that you pick up, you know, extra abilities and experience, and you can take them back into the battle, but you're going to be replaying your sequences over and over again. It's very tough. It's very crowded. But what's different this time, it's not an overhead game. It's kind of like from a side perspective platformer, so you're bouncing from ledge to ledge. You're trying to escape the gungeon that you got into in the previous game and you see a lot of the same kinds of bad guys so little dudes that are running around that are actual bullets or grenades and they're firing at you and you pick up tons and tons of different weapons one of them was a blunderbuss which i was like shooting but of course it wouldn't shoot because it only gets one bullet <laughs> and i'm like running around trying to shoot this ridiculously oversized gun and it was doing nothing <laughs> There's lots of other types of guns, machine guns and lasers. I was shooting at one point, I had a guitar, an electric guitar, and it was blasting out musical notes and taking out all the bad guys. And of course, the company is Dodge Roll, so Dodge Roll becomes a huge mechanic that you have to constantly pull off to avoid the bullet hell that you're gonna see across the screen. Very inventive, very clever. It's like this burgeoning mythology, this massive kind of world, this Gungeon world that's being developed for us as we move on to the series, which I am all about. I think that's great. This is definitely a cool game. It's not as good as Enter the Gungeon, but it's absolutely worth playing if you love that game. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. All right, we're going to move away from the shooters for a second and talk about a very cute puzzle platformer. It's called Pikaniku. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Published again by Devolver, and it's developed by Sector Dub, which is based in London and Paris. So there was some kind of collaboration there. And this game, you play a little character named Piku, who is like a little ball with long legs. So you do a lot of kicking, and you do a lot of swinging, and a lot of jumping from platform to platform. You run around, and you talk to all kinds of weird-looking characters. It almost looks like a bunch of pieces of like art paper and with just like flat colors on top of each other and somebody just moved them around and then animated it or something. It's very minimalist looking, but it's incredibly endearing. And these characters all have a sense of humor about them. Every sort of, you know, story interaction that you get is charming and witty and funny, which you would expect out of developers out of the UK and out of France. There's a great sense of whimsy about the whole thing. And also the music is really cute and inviting you know that's the thing about this game it's very innocuous and accessible but also intelligently made and you're constantly impressed by the cleverness of the design you'll run into little characters that give you objectives one of them that i got into i had to play basketball with a watermelon against somebody and it, we, we only had feet so we're kicking the thing around and it, we had to get it it was kind of like a fusion between soccer and basketball had to get into the hoops on either side and, and then the winner was crowned and you're picking up little trophies every once in a while and you picking up hats for different things. I had to draw a face on a scarecrow, and of course I drew the little bat symbol. I had a big smile on my face with this game. And it was also a nice sort of different direction from all of the shooter and sort of more hardcore type stuff that I've been playing on the Switch recently. Apple. Pekanaku is definitely something that you should check out, especially if you're into puzzle, platform, action-adventure type stuff. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. 
And the last game that I'm going to talk about is called the Video Kid 80s Edition. This is made by Pixel Trip Studios out of Bristol, England, and it's published by Chorus Worldwide Games. And this is also another mobile game, so you can pick this up. I think it's free to play as well. But you've got ads, and I couldn't figure out a way to skip the ads and just buy it outright on the phone. I paid a buck 25 for this game on my Nintendo Switch, and it's a total Paperboy homage slash ripoff, but I'm okay with that because Paperboy hasn't really been redone or re-envisioned or revisited for a long time, and it was a great idea. Paperboy, you had to deliver newspapers. The Video Kid 80s edition, as the name implies, you've got to deliver VHS tapes to neighborhoods, and you start off as a Marty McFly type, charming right out of the gate and you've got to deliver videos up the street and get to your girlfriend Jennifer and you're going to encounter a whole bunch of 80s characters so you'll run into the California Raisins and you know Alvin and the Chipmunks and Jessica Rabbit and the Terminator and Blues Brothers and you might sink into sewers because the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles popped out now they're all you know parodies of all of these characters but it's really fun to kind of spot them all but you got to do it quickly because the game is tough and you know you've got twitchy type controls here where you're swishing back and forth on your skateboard and you can jump over objects and obstructions you can also grind on things to be honest i think it's better suited for the touchscreen controls because it's one of these not only is it a paperboy clone it's also kind of like an endless runner type deal so you know the drill it's last for as long as you can but it's well made the voxel quality of everything is really cool i was very impressed with this game and i think it's worth that buck 25 i spent and considering the price point and all of the smiles that this game gave me immediately, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. So there you go. There are 10 different Nintendo Switch games. I presume some of you have never heard of some of these, you know, and I chose the Nintendo Switch to do the first quick fire look at a bunch of titles, but I probably will do something similar for PlayStation and for Xbox and PC. There are a ton of games that come my way, and I, I want to try to get to them as much as I possibly can, but I think it probably makes sense for me to collect a bunch of them sometimes and put them all together for you there. But there's a bunch of great ideas, some stuff for you to have fun with. And listen, if you like this video, don't forget to give us the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. You can share our content with whoever you would like. Thank you so much for watching and supporting EPN. We'll see you soon. And until then, play forever.